everyone, I'm Chris. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a presentation on jelly making. So jelly is jam's more refined cousin. Uh, jelly is the fruit juice or vegetable juice minus the pulp or fiber that is usually in the jam. So it's a two-step process which includes step one, making the juice, and the second step is making the jelly essentially. So today because it's peak season and there's so much produce ready all at the same time, we're going to be making a raspberry jelly, a red currant jelly, and a Saskatoon jelly. So I just freshly harvested the raspberries off our raspberry uh, bushes. The Saskatoons were locally foraged and the red currants came off my red currant bush just right behind me. So stick around, stay tuned, and we're going to get up to some fun making jelly. And um, please subscribe to my channel and like this video if you're into this kind of thing. Thanks. Uh, so jelly can be made really fancy or it can be used... Um, <laughs> <laughs> or you can use scraps and leftovers to make jelly and what I mean by that is jelly can be made out of fresh beautiful berries just picked um, or it can be made with scraps and not stuff that's moldy or bruised or going bad but stuff that you maybe wouldn't think for example when I can my peaches, I always make a peach syrup or a peach jelly with the pits and the skins of the peaches as I'm canning. And another jelly I like to do, and this is a southern classic, I found it online, certainly not something traditional here in Canada, but a corn cob jelly. And that's super fun because when I freeze a bunch of corn or pressure can a bunch of corn, I have all of these corn cobs just left over and although I ordinarily compost them or make corn stock, which is a great thing to do too, you can make a corn cob jelly and I've even heard of a corn cob molasses or a corn cob honey. I've never tried that, um, but they are basically the same processes. So the corn cob jelly would be um, something you would put over like a corn muffin or a biscuit um, and one time I had the corn cob jelly not totally set so it was syrup and I actually used that for uh, a liquid ingredient when making cornbread and it was really good uh, so it added that sweetness the liquid and then the little bits of corn kernel that were in the jelly kind of went into the cornbread so that was fabulous and great so do think of that when you're making jelly you could do the same thing with apple core peach core um, and peelings provided that you use them right away they don't go into the fridge and get oxidized and you don't use any nasty bits so nothing moldy or bad or bruised we are using up a secondary product but again we're not using those jam berries sometimes you see at the market that you know the flies are buzzing around and they kind of look damaged I don't recommend using that kind of thing for preserving um, Fruit doesn't get fresher when you put it in a jar, you know what I'm saying? Get the freshest stuff you can, the best quality you can, and process it up and use it to the best of your ability. So that's the safe way of going about canning. Uh, we never can stuff that can have microbes, like bruising or decomposing. Um, that's another talk for another day. Um, that, that is the first stage of fermentation though, so check that out if you're into fermenting and I'd still never ferment something that was nasty either but okay anyways another talk for another day uh, so stay tuned let's get making jelly okay friends I'm in the house and I'm ready to get making some jelly so here we have our fresh Saskatoons I've got maybe about six to eight cups or so I've cleaned them and uh, they're all ready to go so there they are and last night I did go ahead and do a bit of advanced prep. So I've got my raspberry juice that I've already made and I've got my red currant juice again that I've already made. Um, so here we are, we are gonna get going. And first step is to make juice. So of course you could always use a, a high quality pre-packaged juice to make your jelly but why not use fresh, beautiful uh, fruit that we've just 
harvested. So here's some Saskatoons and all you have to do to make the juice is simply cook the berries in water uh, for maybe about four hours or so is, is normal for what I do and I never boil. Maybe two to four hours max. Okay, so I'm going to add the Saskatoons to the pot. And I see a few stems here that I'll go ahead and pick out. Okay. We'll be adding water to the berries just to cover. And that looks good. So I'm going to be turning this on medium-low heat. And it will uh, just simmer. So it's not going to get hot uh, necessarily. It's not going to boil. We're basically just making tea here. So you're going to want to give your berries a mash. And I just use a potato masher just to break some of them up. Of course, over the cooking period, they will break down and the juices will be released. But this kind of gets it going. So just go ahead, give them a mash, and then let it cook. So while my Saskatoons and water are slowly cooking down on the stove, I'm going to go ahead and uh, strain our other two juices that I had made in advance. So last night I did the exact same thing with the raspberries and I did the exact same thing with the red currants. Just filled them with water and let it cook for a couple hours and then let them cool overnight. So you can either do this uh, process now with a jelly bag or I have some cheesecloth. I've double lined the cheesecloth and I'm going to put it over a very fine double meshed sieve. Um, so because I don't have cheese, uh, a jelly bag, which would be a little bit uh, a tighter of a weave being a fine muslin, I'm just going to use the, the cheesecloth here. So the trick to, to this part is to not force the liquid through. If you force the liquid through the jelly bag or the cheesecloth, uh, you'll have a cloudy product. If that doesn't matter to you and you want to save the time, then go ahead. But I am entering this raspberry jelly into our local fair, so I of course want the clearest jelly possible and I'm not going to be pushing it through. So this straining can really take, um, it can take quite a while actually, a couple of hours. So as you can see, this is just naturally going to drip through the sieve. And, and I'm not going to force this through. I'm not going to squeeze that because that will, again, make a cloudy jelly. So I'm going to go ahead and strain my red currants as well. Okay, and I've got my second bowl, cheesecloth, and strainer set up. And I'm just going to be, again, letting this drip. Okay, I just wanted to come back and show you my Saskatoons. They have been cooking here, and I'm just continuously coming back and kind of giving them another little bit of a mash to help break them up. Okay, I'm back a couple of hours later, and both my raspberry and red currant have definitely strained, and I've got the juice of both of the liquids. They're looking beautiful and clear. So I'm gonna dispose of this, um, put it into my compost there, and we're gonna start making the actual jelly. Okay, I've got my pot here. I'm going to put the raspberry juice in. And, and usually when I get just to the bottom of the bowl here, I, I don't usually pour the maybe the last quarter cup or so because it just usually has a lot of solids I can see and maybe if I had used a jelly bag I wouldn't have that. Um, but you can see just some extra solids that you don't have to add to your jelly if you want to keep it nice and clear. So 
this liquid here looks beautiful. Uh, I'm going to add my sugar, and it is a lot of sugar when you make jelly. It's usually about one to one. So I have, you know, if you have four cups of juice, you're usually going to add about four cups of sugar. Uh, sometimes it can be, you know, four to three. So I'm just going to add the pectin in, and then I'm going to whisk it on up. And we'll give this a whisk and come back in a minute. Okay, so I've set my raspberry jelly just off to the side here, just on the back burner, and I'm going to get started on the red currant. We're going to be doing the exact same process with the red currant juice. So I've got that beautiful red currant juice here that is strained. And I didn't get quite as much juice as I did from the raspberry, and there's quite a bit of solids there. So I'm not going to dump that in because you can kind of see, if you can see, there's just a bit of cloudiness that I don't want to introduce into the jelly. Okay, so this liquid here, I've got about three cups and I'm going to add about three cups of sugar into that. And then again, I'm going to add a package of my Bernardin Classic Pectin, whisk it all up and I'll come back in a minute. Okay guys, we are multitasking today. Stay with me now. This is the Saskatoon berries. I have cooked this for a couple of hours and then ran the Saskatoon through the sieve with the cheesecloth again. And then I've just got the liquid draining underneath and uh, we'll wait for that to drain for maybe another hour or so. Again, we're not going to be pressing the berries through. We're not going to be forcing it through. We're just going to let it go through naturally. Um, so we'll come back to that in an hour when that's ready. And in the meantime, I'm going to continue on with my raspberry jelly and the red currant jelly. So I've got both of the jellies cooking away here. I've got the red currant and I've got the raspberry uh, just behind it here. You can see both of those. So we are going to add, we've got the sugar in both of those. We've got the, uh, the pectin in both of them. And we're going to add about two tablespoons of lemon juice to that one and about three tablespoons of lemon juice to that one because I've got a little bit more in there. So lemon juice of course is super important to add. Bottled lemon juice is really important if you are going to be uh, canning this. I'm using Earth's Choice Organic Bottled Lemon Juice here. It's really really good stuff. And the reason you use bottled lemon lemon juice when you're canning and preserving is because it's a known pH. So it's, it's a matter of safety. You don't want to use lemon juice from lemons, actual lemons, even though it, it sounds like a great idea, it's fresh and beautiful, but the pH is unknown. So you're doing this for canning safety, so pH is a factor in canning. Um, so that's definitely important, plus lemon juice is another source of pectin, and remember we've strained all the fiber out, so jellies need commercially produced pectin to thicken up. They will not thicken up on their own like a jam will. So while these are cooking up, I just thought I would uh, I would go through some specialty jellies with you. So there's there's all sorts of specialty jellies that can be made: wine jelly, herb jelly, jalapeno mint jelly, hot pepper jelly, apple cider jelly, um, all sorts of citrus jellies. Tangerine lemon is one that sounds delicious. I've seen a recipe for that. Watermelon rind jelly. So there's a good one. Just like corn cob jelly, you're using up. Uh, waste, stuff you'd otherwise throw away. So sun-dried tomato jelly, there's another fabulous one. Balsamic red pepper jelly, that is fabulous, I've made that. And roasted garlic jelly, there's another really good one. Um, really nice on a charcuterie board. So there's some, um, you know, examples of, of beautiful specialty jellies that you can make and have fun with. Classic jellies like raspberry, blackberry, elderberry, um, those are all great. Saskatoon, Concord grape, currant, those are all great to make because they're really seedy. So I'm just mixing away here. We're, we're coming to a boil here. And I wanted to mention one other thing is you, you don't want to cook down jelly. You want to cook it 
at this stage for as little as possible. So boil it for a minute and get it off the stove. You want to preserve that nice fresh taste. I'm only trying to activate the pectin here. I'm not trying to cook it down like a classic old-fashioned jam. Okay everybody, I'm back and I've got my raspberry jelly right here and I've got my red currant jelly right here. And so I just want to show you one thing with foam on jams and jellies. So I've got a lot of foam on this raspberry jelly here and I've just finished boiling it with the pectin and it is just going to cool. I'm going to put it in the mason jar here right away. But I just wanted to show you all this foam that I've got. So you can skim the foam off with a wooden spoon. You can also add margarine, which I wouldn't, or butter to this, again, which I just wouldn't do that either, um, which is fine and it can help keep the foam down. What I like to do though, and I just find this a lot easier, is um, so after I pour it into the mason jar, like I haven't skimmed the foam, I haven't added any butter or anything like that, I just take a teaspoon and I go around just, and I find after the, after it's had a second or well, probably about 20-30 minutes to cool a little bit. This foam kind of comes off in one large piece and it's really easy just to remove it like that. So there's just a little bit around the rim here that I'll just clean up just like that. If you can see that. And then what I'll do is uh, wipe the rim of the jar obviously because I'm going to can this, but I'm going to wipe it with a paper towel uh, with a little bit of vinegar on it and that will just finish cleaning up the rim and I'll, I'll also kind of wipe down a little bit into the rim just to clean that up so during the venting process while it's canning um, it just helps for a better seal seal I find and I, I have really good success with wiping everything down with vinegar for the pressure canner or the water bath canner so that's a really great tip on how to remove your uh, foam really easy without adding any extra fat if some of you are potentially vegans out there um, or just kind of find it gross and I'm one of those people I just kind of find it unappetizing for some reason to add butter to this even though I'm gonna butter my toast I just don't want to put butter in my jam or jelly and then process it through the water bath canner which you're actually not even supposed to can butter so you know there's that too okay so I'm gonna continue on with uh, just getting this jelly ladled into the mason jars and I'm going to come right back with my Saskatoon. Okay, last but not least, we're on to the Saskatoon. So I actually ran out of pectin. It's been a busy day of preserving. So instead of a Saskatoon jelly, it is now a Saskatoon syrup. Same exact process, minus the pectin. So here we are, Saskatoon juice. probably stop about right there and just uh, put that in the compost it's just kind of gotten cloudy so I've got roughly uh, four cups of juice and we're gonna go four cups of sugar it is a syrup after all and then I'm going to add a quarter cup of lemon juice So we're going to bring this just to a boil, dissolve the uh, sugar, and I'm going to do all that whisking off camera so it doesn't make a bunch of noise, and I'll be right back. 
Okay everybody, so I'm finished. It's been a long day of uh, preserving and I'm really happy with the results of what I've got here. So I'll just go through what that is. I've got three and a half pints of raspberry jelly. I ended up with four pints of Saskatoon syrup because I ran out of pectin, but it's delicious. And then I've got two pints of um, red currant jelly. And I didn't talk to you about this product here, although I did, uh, I did cook it up today. So here is a fireweed jelly, and so that's a floral jelly. Um, it's a little bit different of a process, which is why I didn't cover it along with the berries. But that's certainly um, fun for another day. And if you'd like to go back and check my videos, I do have a video on rose syrup. So it's the exact same uh, technique. You're just using fireweed flowers. You can also do it with daylilies. Uh, what else can you do that with? Lilacs, lavender. There's all sorts of floral jellies and syrups that you can make if you like. Um, so the overall cost of all of this here is really, really low. Everything was either foraged or grown out of my yard. And um, other than the sugar and the canning lid that I will use to seal this up with, uh, that's, you know, and my labor, of course, and the lemon juice. Um, so that's the lemon juice and the sugar are probably the most expensive items. Um, so I'd factor in that, and really what I would think, um, you know, something like this would cost me would be, you know, if I don't factor in my time, um, maybe a dollar or so to produce. And this is a, a quart, a 500 mil jar, and they would charge something like $10 at the farmer's market if I was to buy a product like that. And keep in mind the quality. This is organic and... Um, you know it's it's very well made and well grown so that that's certainly a factor uh, in my opinion so here we are uh, thanks for hanging out with me today I know it's been a longer video than I normally put out but if you like this video please go ahead and uh, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more fun cooking gardening canning soaping and uh, all those domestic lovely things 